So I am with Aurora and Dennis, and they have a PDQ 32 named Serenity that they've had since 2017. So Aurora and Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to choose a PDQ as your boat? You want to start with that one? Sure. Um, well, we were, we had a little uh, 16 foot little day sailor that we had you know, taking around Lake Champlain and some other places. And we wanted, we're looking to get a little bit larger boat that we could, uh, you know, take the kids on <laughs> and, <laughs> and do some more than just a weekend uh, sail. Um, and uh, we had looked around at a lot of boats, but, uh, you know, obviously we've got three kids with through college. So we're mm -hmm. uh, going for a little bit of a budget boat, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of a learning boat. Um, yes. So we were looking at small catamarans like Gemini's and uh, PDQs and, and some others like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this one just came on the market in Rhode Island. Um, we were not seriously looking. Yeah. <laughs> when, we, when we bought it. <laughs> we just happened to be visiting a friend in Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. And, you're like, oh, let's look at this boat, and it just it kept up. it kept checking all the boxes, and mm -hmm. um, just just worked out. Had you known much about the PDQ before you went aboard that one in Rhode Island? Was it uh, had you narrowed down to that model, or um, we knew we were looking in the low thirty foot range for a catamaran, and um, we chartered Gemini. Um, so we'd been on a similar size boat and we'd spent a fair bit of time with uh, Mike and Rebecca from Zero to Cruising and were had been following their blog. They were on a PDQ 32 um, for their um, exploration of the Caribbean. And so we'd been following them for a couple of years and we'd even sailed with them, not on their PDQ, but on their next boat, which was an ML. Um, and so, and you know, one of the things that struck us, I think about Art's time with them was that they um, they were on this beautiful cruising boat, right? Um, this beautiful Amel, which is what, you know, Delos has, right? So they're on this beautiful cruising boat and they talked about their PDQ 32, like it was their firstborn baby and they missed it constantly. <laughs> and and we, were, we just sort of looked at each other like, hmm, we're on the Delos boat, but they missed their PDQ 32 like crazy. And so, um, you know, not long after that, when, when we found, we stumbled across this PDQ 32, which there's not a lot of small catamarans in Northern New England. Um, you know, so it's <laughs> kind of rare to find one um, on the on the heart. And we stumbled across this PDQ 32 and it, just, it really did just tick all the boxes. And then we said, let's do it now. Um, I think the other the other piece that I will add is that we do ultimately, we're part-time cruisers, right? So we live in New Hampshire um, and we sail part-time in the summer uh, right now, because that's what works well in our lives. Um, we do ultimately have plans to go a little further than that and spend more time on our boat, but we think that probably won't happen until our kids are out of the house. And so, um, so having this little boat was actually okay right now, even though we have sometimes have too many teenagers on this little boat, um, <laughs> but not for long periods of time. And then when we're ready to go, a little further it's just fine for a couple it's big enough for a couple so um so we thought it was a both a good boat for us for now because of the price and because of the size um but also probably a good boat for us longer term if we decided we wanted to go further um we would be able to do it together on that boat so that's cool yeah and that's you know the boat for right now is a big deal but so mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you think are the best things about her for you mm -hmm. You want to start? <laughs> sure. Um, well, it the boat is super simple. Um, it, you know, the very few systems. Yeah. Um, you know, the sails and you know aren't so big that we can't, you know, handle handle them. Even though we right. don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> well, yeah, we're new. Right. We went to sailing school in 2015, so we were new sailors when we bought sure. when we bought her, and she wasn't intimidating at all. Um, it was, it was really, um, she's, she's been a good teacher for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The boat's not so big. We can't manhandle it off any dock and, mm -hmm. you know, you know, we can get out of scrapes uh, yeah, that good. we wouldn't be able to with a 40 foot boat. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been good. She's powered by outboards, which is a little weird, right? So two nine nine outboards, which is what a lot of people have on their dinghy, is what powers our boat. And people um, have stronger. Yeah, they have bigger on outboards dinghy. Than that, <laughs> on their dinghy sometimes, but a lot of people have those nine nines on their on their dinghy. That's where most people yeah. see them. That's what powers our our catamaran. Two of those, and one of my favorite things is that you can lift them up, and we gain a knot of speed 
pretty much um, every time we lift up those motors, get them out of the water. Get, and we have no props in the water all the time. So um, we don't have growth on our props. Um, when we have to repower and we've now half repowered, <laughs> um, it's not that big a deal to lift an outboard out of this boat and get a new one. Um, it's, it's just not that big a deal. So yeah. I really love that, that about her. That's cool. Yeah, our boat actually um, had, came with uh, outboards as well. And we ended up putting an in inboard engine in on one side and a, a outboard on the other, which was a very strange combination, but it worked for yep. us. So yep. I think yep. it's what works. But so what about criticisms or things that you think could be changed to make her better? What are, are you found any of thing like that? Um, we've had a problem with the sail balance a bit. Mm -hmm. um, our boat, especially, I think they put on a larger mast um, in an effort to, you know, put on more sail area. But that meant that the boat really wants to go to weather, um, especially with the self-tacking jib that it came with. Yeah, which um, is yeah. lovely. The self-tacking jib is lovely for single handing, just so easy to sail, but she just didn't sail really well with the jib on. Yeah, um, so, so we did, uh, get a Genoa to, you know, and it sails much better, obviously in low wind and, and it's better balanced. Yeah. And Aurora is making a mainsail right now. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, oh, wow. uh, which has been fun. Yeah, we're yeah. sail right kit. So, yep. and we made our ASIM, our asymmetrical spinnaker last, last year. So that yeah. was, um, that was fun. Yeah, we've gotten into uh, a lot of sewing for boats in our time, which is a big surprise to me. Cause I have to say I was, a, I was anti-sewing. I didn't sew and um, now I'm, make sales so well, i guess so, the sales aren't so huge you could probably fit them yeah. in your home um yes compared to well <laughs> not flat <laughs> in our home, but you can but you can make a sale in our house yeah yeah so we're hoping the new main sale uh mm -hmm. helps with the um yeah. the sale balance too um and the other thing that i would just say mm -hmm. is that this boat is does not have conventional looks yeah. um you know when we pull into a harbor people go what's your where's your boat we go mm -hmm. oh we have the um uh what do we call it? The alien, alien bug, bug is what we call it. Uh, <laughs> they're cute. <laughs> they are cute, but they look really strange. They, and you know, we're in we're in Rhode Island where there are all these beautiful oh, wooden yeah. boats with classic lines. And I often we pull into an anchorage <laughs> and I'm like, I can't even believe they let us in here. Um because <laughs> we don't look yeah. like we belong. Yeah. Um when the America's Cup boats are yeah. pulling up yeah. you know, going right by us and we're like, hmm, what do they think about our boat? <laughs> yeah, it does look, it does look kind of funny. But it is, I I will say the design, every square inch of this boat has been well thought out. And even though it's a really small boat, it's so functional. Um, I think the only thing that is hard for me about it is like there's only single lane traffic in our, in, our, in the boat, right? Everything is narrow and two people can't pass in any place, right? Um, you know, it's not an island bed. You're climbing over your partner. That, those kinds of things of being on a small um, Catabran. We don't have a separate shower, um, although I prefer my, you know, showers outside anyway. So, um, so that's not, that's not so bad, but there's definitely there, it's a, it's a small space, but it is very very well designed um and so it doesn't um it doesn't feel dysfunctional um at, in any way it just is not large right why don't we pop into the interior then and tell us a little bit about how you use it for your family and um go mm -hmm. through that a little bit where's the galley and how does that work for so you the, it's galley down the galley is down in the port hull um which i wasn't sure how i would how i would feel about that but i actually love it um, it's really lovely. It, it's easy for cooking underway um, because it's just really comfortable and the, it's narrow enough that you can brace yourself really easily if, if you know, if it's a little boisterous out. Um, and the galley is very, very functional. Um, it has two cabins, both are in the aft. Um, so they are fairly, they are fairly comfortable. There's one head. Um, which, you know, if you have too many teenagers on the boat, it can be a bit of a <laughs> bit of a challenge. We often, when we have too many teenagers, those are the moments that we choose to spend, you know, a night or two on a dock. So we get some extra toilets um, and showers and stuff. Um, yeah, so we have two cabins. And then sometimes um, when we have a lot of people on board, the um, salon table, you know, lowers down and it converts into a oversized king size bed. We have put three teenagers there. Um, and then the other thing we do that's kind of funny when we have really too many teenagers is we will pitch a tent on the forward trampoline because um, the trampoline is just the right size for about a four person tent. 
And um, so we have been known to pitch a tent on our trampoline and that's send teenagers up to sleep on the bow. That's fantastic. Maya had a lot of sleepovers on our nets, mm -hmm. but because we're in the tropics, she didn't need the tent, but I, I think the tent sounds fantastic. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. So uh, are you able to sit everybody at the table and all that kind of thing works or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, easily sit six at the Yeah, at six the table. comfortably, eight little cozy. Yeah. And storage, mm -hmm. There's everything. No yeah, we have no problem with storage. There's a massive amount of probably too much storage for weight, right? So um, like other catamarans, if you filled up all your storage, you would be really, really slow. Um, there's lots of storage under the beds. Um, and the, the um, there's adequate cabinets. Some of the cabinets are quite small, you know, quite small. Um, so but 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 it all but it all works. Um, there's a lot of storage underneath the salon area. Um, so yeah, it's, the storage is, is perfectly adequate for what we do. I don't know how we'll feel about it if we're living on it full time. Um, <laughs> we, we live in a pretty good sized house right now, so it'll be a little bit of an adjustment, but, um, but for what we're doing, you know, a couple weeks at a time is, um, is it's perfect. That's cool. So tell us a little bit about sailing then. Um, how does she sail and what are her favorite conditions? Oh, she loves going downwind, <laughs> wing on wing with an ASAM up. Yeah, so um, yeah, so she loves she loves going downwind, um, like lots of catamarans, right? Um, but she's pretty comfortable in you know all directions with the Genoa on. She points better than she did with the jib, um, which is which is nice. Um, we don't we're kind of fair weather sailors. So, um, you know, which is great for a boat like this, right? <laughs> this is not a boat to sail through hurricanes, right? So, um, so, so we, um, so we haven't sailed in really, really boisterous conditions, um, but we've been in some waves and chop and she does well, what would you say? Yeah, I think compared to boats of her size, like the Gemini that we sail on, um, <laughs> you know, we have much higher bridge deck clearance. Yeah, we we have that. much better shaped hulls, <laughs> just, you don't feel like you're pushing through the water, you know, it, it, um, you know, and the, the um, 16 foot beam is really nice. So yeah, um, cool. yeah, I can't imagine a boat of the same size sailing any better. So yeah, we're very right. happy. Right, so we're, you've been in, so light winds, moderate winds, you haven't been into bigger winds at all to see yeah. how she does in heavier winds. We avoid winds. those. Fair, <laughs> so do I, yeah, no, totally. <laughs> Totally agree. We've um, occasionally, you know, we've occasionally had higher winds here and there, there by surprise for short periods of time, generally short distances, but, um, and she's always been fine. I mean, there's a, there's three reefing points. You can, you know, the, the, it's on a, you know, a furling jib, you can, you can put out just a scrap ahead sail. Um, she's easy to, to, to get the sail really way down, um, to, to make it more comfortable in, in higher winds, but, um, it's not, those are not our chosen conditions for sailing. <laughs> That's a good call. How about motoring? How do you find, how's the speed under motor and maneuverability? Yeah. Um, with both motors, um, you know, you can easily get five knots, um, maybe six okay. if you redlined it. Right. Um, and, but a lot of times we'll just put one motor down and do three and a half knots if we're not in a rush. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we get about, um, it's about half gallon per hour per motor. Mm -hmm. um so we can <laughs> you can go for a while we can go pretty far and yeah. on not much and we usually fill the tank maybe twice, twice a, a year season, yeah. So. yeah and we sail as much as we can also we do really love to sail so um so we we motor some and we are we are not you know we're rhode island sailors so the farthest we've gone so far is nantucket um so, so we're you know we're we're doing day hops um, right. here and there. So, um, and although we'll go for a few weeks at a time, we're hopping, you know, 30 miles, 40 miles, maybe 50 miles every once in a while in a day. Right. So, so we're not going really long distances. It's like trip. around here. And those are nice. Those are nice distances that you can do it within a day and get in and enjoy the sunset. And that's, yep. I think a lot of what it's about. Um, so how about getting in and out of docks and the that maneuverability and that visibility. Mm -hmm. Do you have any issues there? No, um, the engines are far enough apart that we can spin the boat pretty easily. Yeah. Um, the, the design of the helm and the visibility is, is kind of unique. Um, like a lot of catamarans have, you know, like the salon is between the helm and the front of the boat. Um, and with this boat, there's a sliding 
hat, like, uh, I don't know what to call it, sliding yeah, it's like, top. It, it's like the roof opens. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, like a convertible so, car. So, so there okay. really isn't anything between you and what in the front of the boat. Yeah. Um, and the helm's raised just a little bit so you can easily see over all, everything that the, the cat, you know, what the cat, the cabin has. Um, you can, I think you can see all four corners of the boat just about yeah. from the helm. Yeah. Um, and the and the two engines really do give excellent maneuverability. The only time when you some, maybe don't always feel it is in a lot of current because you know nine nines are still nine nines. So um, in a yeah. lot of current, sometimes you sort of feel like, oh, am I a little underpowered here? <laughs> um, but we we've had no trouble docking um, her at all. I mean, she has a sixteen foot beam, right? So you know it she doesn't fit everywhere, but um, but but she's not hard to dock. That's cool. So uh, the future of the boat, do you have any projects that you're working on or anything mm -hmm. that you think needs changing aside from the sales that you've already done? Is there anything mm -hmm. else that sort of? Always. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, we put in uh, lithium batteries and did a big solar mm -hmm. um, oh. project for it. And that has just made the boat such a joy to not have to you know, have to have a generator, not to- Never plug into shore power. Yeah, never. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and uh, so that's been great. And in fact, we can even run a little, we have a little air conditioner. Um, so we can run that off the batteries now. So that's mm -hmm. really, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, that was a great. That was a great improvement. Improvement. Um, other than. We've done all the canvas yeah. um, and we'll have all, all new sales this year. Um, what year was she? I forgot to ask you that. She's a 98. So oh, she's okay. kind of older, right? Yeah. Um, so there's constantly projects, right? Um, I've gotten into sewing, so I think there's going to be some new cushions coming maybe next winter. We'll see. Oh, um, those kinds of, yeah, that kind of work. Um, With the big hardtop, doing the um, the Dodger all the way around was a new one of those that, that mm -hmm. worked for us was just yeah, a huge was project. That was awesome. Um, we still, every time we unzip those windows, we're like, yes, yes. this is the best <laughs> thing ever. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah. We've done a stack pack. We made our own stack pack. And um, yeah, those, those, all those, all those things have, um, have made her really livable. I don't, we don't have any really big projects on the horizon right now. We've done all our big ones. Now we're just waiting to see what breaks next. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. Yeah. So here's the tricky question. If you were going to swap her for another boat, what would you swap her for? If anything, um, we chartered a main cat 30 mm -hmm. in the Abacos, and okay. that is it's kind of similar, it's kind Very of a similar, similar boat, but a little more sporty and with a dagger board. Uh, okay. so the performance was like just like a little mm -hmm. bit of a like. Mm. Also a little lighter, <laughs> so, uh, <okay. laughs> right? So very lightly loaded, and so yeah. So yeah, yeah. Doesn't have would, all the I teenagers aboard. <laughs> if we didn't bring the teenagers, the Abacos that helps. Um, yeah, I would look at a Main Cat Thirty Eight probably. And you like sea winds, right? I really do like sea winds, although I've never sailed one. So um, I would. Uh, I I have always had a thing for Sea Wind Eleven Sixty lights, which again have the outboard engines that you can lift up. So. Um, I don't know. I have a little bit of a, I'm really curious about potentially going electric, um, potentially oh, okay. on one side. Um, so half electric. Right. Um, uh, I've, I've thought a lot about that. And that's part of why I'm the, the um, outboard motors are a little more appealing to me, I think. Right. We could, you know, once we get there, once we're really, once we really think we've got the right batteries and the right electric motors, we could easily swap out for one electric and sort of do that as a little bit of a test. Um, yeah, we've had great experience with our, um, Torquedo on our yeah, dinghy. We have a dinghy so we're just like, hey, no oil changes. Yeah, like yeah. super easy maintenance. Twist to start. So, yeah, it just goes every time. <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. So, Light. Oh, I'll be curious to hear what you go. Yeah. So if um, people are looking at a PDQ 32, what mm -hmm. tips would you offer? What would you have to say? Oh, what tips for a PDQ 32? I don't know, other than enjoy it and yeah you know um are they all pretty soon. much the same all the 32s that came the 32s out? are very similar um i think there is a long range cruising version that um that has um inboards um there's also a 36 that is yes. very quite similar but a little bit bigger um and they have a lot of overlapping features um 
like it's a lovely boat if you want a catamaran that's around a hundred thousand um, dollars instead of you know three four times that yeah. right and 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 you're you're ready to have a smaller boat that is very very functional well designed um but also older right it's it's you know it's it's, it's they're they're all at this point i think 20 years old almost they they yeah, stopped making them almost 20 right. years ago so yeah. um well more than 10 15 years ago i guess so um so they're all a little older so you're going to have those regular upkeep things that you, you know you need to pay attention to um but it's a, just a lovely boat, especially for relatively new sailors um, who knew, we knew we wanted a catamaran um, and we weren't, we would not four years, you know, th four years ago have been able to buy a Leopard 47, right? Okay. Um, and so we've really fallen in love with this, this little boat and we still get on it. And I mean, every single time we sail it, I think we, we have this moment where we're like, this is just the right boat for us right now. Just the right boat for us. Oh, that's um, it. So it's, yeah, which is a lovely feeling to have about your boat. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think love gets you through an awful lot of, you know, yeah. boat repairs and projects and stuff and, and enjoying them. Well, thank you so much for spending the time talking to us about your PDQ 32. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.